they started suggesting in their articles that we were intentionally misleading people with our jokes. And our entire goal was to muddy the waters of current controversies to spread misinformation. And then most recently, the New York Times came after us and said that we are, we are a far-right misinformation site that's disguised as satire. You tend to be very good at making things accurate in a funny way by kind of exposing the nature of it. What, what's the process you go through for this? It's not just trying to make it look stupid. It's actually understanding it. And then, yes, you mock it and you exaggerate and you and you pick it apart and you point out hypocrisy and you do all that fun stuff. And you have a lot of fun with all the different elements of it. But you do have to have this kind of grounding in reality or it's just not going to ring true for anyone. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Now, with all the craziness right now of this woke mob culture and attacks on people based on identity, politics, and other things like this, it's good to kind of take it lightly sometimes and to find some time to laugh at sometimes the hypocrisy or ridiculousness of some of the narratives being fed to us. Uh, here we have with us Kyle Mann. He's the chief editor of a website you might know of. It's the Babylon Bee, and they specialize in satire. And uh, Kyle, I understand you just wrote a book called The Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness, which I want to talk to you about. And thank you for being on Crossroads. Yeah, thanks for having me. This will be a lot of fun. Yeah. So first off, let's start with this book you've written, This Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness. And it's, it's a fun book. It's, it's a coffee table type book. And you really go into a lot of the hypocrisy on the woke ideology. I'm curious how the idea for this came about. Well, we actually wrote an article on the Babylon Bee called the Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness. And it got this huge response, you know, and we're churning out so many articles a day. We never really know what's going to resonate and what's going to hit. You know, we just want to write stuff that's funny. And uh, and you never really know what's going to really, really go far and, ri far and wide with our crowd. So we did this guide to wokeness where we described, you know, here's all of the principles of being woke here. You know, you got to pick your pronouns and scream them at, at everyone that you meet and all these things. And uh, and it just got this massive response, um, which, you know, typically a Babylon Bee article, it's it's got to have a really funny, witty headline in order to go viral like that, um, because so much of our humor is packed into that headline. And so this one didn't have a funny headline at all. It was just you know, the Babylon Bee explains wokeness to you. And people were clicking on it, sharing it. And so we started talking internally and just said, what if we turn that into a book? <laughs> and it, and it, you know, wokeness really lends itself to that kind of satire and comedy. Um, and we hope we were able to strike a good balance in that book between exposing a lot of that hypocrisy and just being a fun read for people, you know, uh, sitting in the, in the, uh, by the coffee table or in the bathroom, you know. Yeah, well, th this is an interesting thing you're doing is that you're actually hitting on pretty serious topics. And ironically, through satire, you actually do a pretty good job of explaining the nature of these things. Y you, you have a, I think one of the things that makes Babylon Bee's humor so appealing to a lot of people is that you tend to be very good at making things accurate in a funny way. <laughs> which, by kind of exposing the nature of it, I, I, what, what's the process you go through for this? I mean, how do you, how do you, what's, what's the process to actually do this? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, the type of satire we write is this, you know, typically very dry. I mean, obviously in the book we have a lot of over-the-top stuff and, and hilarious, you know, stick figure illustrations and all of that stuff. Um, but typically, you, you need to have a good understanding of what you're satirizing for the satire to work. That's what makes all the um, all, all the classic satires really work, is that the person writing it has... Um, I, I don't know if respect is the right word, <laughs> but definitely on some level, a certain type of respect or understanding for the thing that they are satirizing. Um, you know, all the classic films from Christopher Guest, like uh, This is Spinal Tap and A Mighty Wind and, and all of those, you can tell that the people involved had, had a respect for the subject matter. It's not just trying to make it look stupid. It's actually understanding it. And then, yes, you mock it and you exaggerate and you, and you pick it apart and you point out hypocrisy and you do all that fun stuff. And you have a lot of fun with all the different elements of it. But you do have to have this kind of, 
grounding in reality or it's just not going to ring true for anyone. And that's the problem with a lot of comedy is that it doesn't it doesn't ring true because it's not based in reality. <laughs> so we we definitely have to start with that foundation before we can then play with something and and have some fun with it. Well, and that that's an important point. You know, we saw this just recently with Dave Chappelle doing these Netflix specials where he's getting attacked left, right, and center on this stuff. I mean, he he's getting attacked. He he seems like he doesn't care too much, to be honest. Um, but to be able to make fun. Which, which is what it is, to, to make fun of topics that people find to be sensitive. And that, that really tends to be the heart of comedy. And if you can't base, if you can't make fun of reality <laughs> or the, the new reality being presented to us, how can you even have comedy? I know this is why a lot of comedians refuse to, for example, perform at colleges and why a lot of them are, are really not even doing comedy so much anymore. You know, what, what, what has happened to the comedian, I guess? Yeah, well, you know, the comedian is kind of supposed to be this character and culture and society who's who's on the fringes and pointing at those who are holding the cultural power on the inside. And you know, and that's on kind of this meta societal analysis level that's maybe too too highbrow for what we do. We just try to make jokes, you know. <laughs> but I think there is this element where that that kind of setup and structure of like there are these people who, you know, it's an emperor has no clothes type situation. And the comedians are the ones who are pointing that out <laughs> in a lot of ways. And I think, you know, you're talking about the colleges and and uh, and the comedians not being willing to go there. And I mean, why would they? You know, the left has kind of become this, you know, this is the pattern I see anyways. The left has kind of become the um, zealously religious people who cannot have their religion and their ideology mocked anymore. Um, you know, that's, that's why Christians have been fantastic to be the, the butt of jokes for the past 50 years, because they were just always so serious and, you know, trying to cancel everything from Dungeons and Dragons to heavy metal, you know. And now that's not Christians anymore. Now that's the left. They're the ones who are so self-serious all the time. And, you know, if you're at a party and there's a guy sitting in the corner scowling at everybody, well, guess what? He's going to be the butt of all the jokes, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and so that's, I think, the phenomenon we're seeing there with guys like Chappelle that are just pointing out things that wouldn't have been controversial five years ago. And all of a sudden, that becoming this big flashpoint for the culture war. How ridiculous is that? Well, you made an interesting point, is that you know, this really has become this kind of humorless culture. And that was something that really came to the forefront when Trump was president, because Trump, he would make fun of things. And if you, you ever been to like a, his events, I mean, he's genuinely pretty funny. A lot of them were pretty dang funny. But the media, the mainstream media, would often take his jokes and present it as if it was serious and then do these really humorless scowling you know critiques on his words and talk about how mean he was but a lot of people who voted for him they thought it was hilarious there was a humor to it and it really raised the issue i think of the humorless new left i mean what, what are your thoughts about this whole phenomenon i'm curious yeah i mean you know just broadly i mean trump was so fantastic for comedy if you knew how to do it well, I mean, Trump, how wonderful is that? That's that's God's gift to comedians like Donald Trump is the president. <laughs> how wonderful is that? And yet so many on the on the left whiffed on that because they couldn't see it as the comedy that it was, you know, to them. It was this is a world ending, you know, democracy ending moment. And so they turned from comedians into lecturers you know, on moral values and, oh, you know, this is fascism and this is that. And if that's your, you know, uh, you know, and backing up, that's why conservative comedy was always so bad. It's because everything was this very serious, like we have to win the culture war. We have to make jokes in order to tell people how bad things are, you know. And and then it totally flip-flopped in the Trump era because that was every late night show was just shouting at you that orange man bad, you know. And and you like you you get it like okay I understand he's evil he's he's an idiot whatever but there's no joke there and now you're just saying something <laughs> you know you're not you're not actually making a joke um, so for us at the Babylon Bee it was just wonderful I mean Trump was wonderful for comedy and we were very sad that he left office <laughs> because he was so great um, I mean if you understand his character and you can and you can roll with kind of his boisterous personality and like you said you know the sense of humor that he had where obviously he wasn't always being serious with stuff that he said um you know and to them everything was just so so dour during those years um you know and and you know unfortunately even with 
getting their way and getting Biden in an office that still hasn't let up. You know, they're still going on about Trump and he, he hasn't been in office for 10 months. So. Well, folks, two months on now, and we are still totally demonetized by YouTube. Given the situation where we have to censor ourselves if we want to really stay on this platform and make it work, we've decided on something else, which is this. We've launched a new platform called Epic TV, EPOCHTV.com. And through this, we're able to publish uncensored content. News that can criticize anything we'd like, news that can talk about anything we'd like, news that can give you real information from any part of the world about any topic without having to worry whether individuals will censor it. And in this current environment where information is being controlled, where narratives are being controlled, and where anyone who steps outside the boundaries of what is the accepted narrative by the fact checkers, you know, quote unquote, by different big tech organizations, by media organizations, and so on. This is something that we believe is needed for the modern political environment, where people should be able to call things out. People should be able to question things. This is the basis of the fourth estate in America. The belief, again, that media should be able to hold government power in check, and that media should be able to inform the public about the issues they should be informed about, because that is the basis of our election system. An informed public making informed decisions if you control the system of information, you control the political system. And folks, being a media organization, we can't stand for that. And so again, we have created an uncensored platform, Epic TV. And anyone who wants to support Crossroads or support our broader mission of bringing real news, uncensored news, it's not afraid to stand up for what matters, please check out our website, epochtv.com, epochtv.com. Check out the link below. And folks, please support us there.